So unit four, continuing on, we will bring in some chemical reactions that we've looked at before today, and more specifically, the quantities, continuing the quantities aspect of it. So stoichiometry, by definition, are just calculations that relate to the amounts of substances. But all in all reality, it's just converting. Okay? In all reality, stoichiometry is just converting. It's not converting from like centimeters to meters. It's converting things that might not seem logically connected. But it does allow us to go to a lot of different routes. It allows us to determine the answer of how much or how many. It begins a talk of that, converting from how much you start with to how much you have on the other end. Now, converting from grams to moles, we've done that. We've converted from moles to grams. We've converted from atoms to moles and then moles to atoms. What stoichiometry does is it brings in chemical reactions. It's converting, utilizing units and a chemical reaction. And that's why we have the do the chemical reactions, balance them, and so we're kind of giving you all the little parts that you need to be able to put the problem together. It allows us to ask the question, how many grams of ammonia will be produced by the Haber process if we start with blank nitrogen and blank hydrogen? Most of us don't know what the Haber process is, and that's fine. You're not expected to know what the Haber process is yet. The Haber process is a very simple reaction. It is very popular amongst chemists when teaching stoichiometry. Why? Because the Haber process takes two simple diatomic molecules, not helium, to create ammonia. Which, when we look at this, we can see it is not balanced. And therefore, requires balancing. The Haber process is a simple synthesis reaction. We're making something. Two things make something. None, it is not balanced, therefore it requires us to balance. So there's a lot of good things that come out of this. It's simple. It's not overly complicated. It doesn't give us what's called one-to-one -one ratios, which will make more sense in just a little bit. That's why we like it so much. Because if I showed you an even simpler reaction and it was one-to-one, -one, you would a lot of times students would look at it and say, oh, they're always one-to-one. -one. No, they're not. So we start with one that is not one-to-one -one ratio, but still is a simple reaction. To make you learn 
that you have to balance the chemical reaction. You have to look at what you're kind of given when the process happens. The first step in a stoichiometry problem is having that balanced chemical reaction or chemical equation. Okay? Why is that important? Because you need the relationship between the compounds to be spot on. What does that mean? To be correct, spot on, accurate. You need a balanced chemical reaction. If you do not have the correct stoichiometric ratio, which comes from a balanced chemical reaction, things can go wrong really fast. And as we have learned, if we don't name or write the formula for the chemical reaction or the components within a chemical reaction, the balancing can go wrong. So we have to be careful from the very beginning. And it is only through practice and practice and practice and practice and practice do we become a little bit quicker at it. Thinking of back to when you were in third grade and you were doing the timetables. Some people still have trouble with their multiplications. And you're like, five times five, and you're like, uh, 25. Some of us would just go five times five, and you're like, boom, snap, 25. Without even thinking of like, where'd that come from? Same thing over many years of doing five times five, you've just got that ingrained into your brain. Well, over many years, I have the names of a lot of compounds memorized. There's there. You are like back in third grade a little bit, still having to think about your multiplication tables. But they're just doing naming stuff. You look back now at your multiplication tables, you're like, that was so easy. The idea is through practice by the end of the year, hopefully you've done it enough that you're like, it wasn't that hard. And after a certain amount of time, you'll probably forget about it to make room for something else. But then you'll see it again and you're like, I remember that. Where did I put that in my brain? It's somewhere in there. And they kind of go through it and you're like, oh, then all of a sudden it comes back, right? It's things like that, that where it comes from. It's the balanced chemical reaction. So. Remember back earlier when we talked about chemical equations? Well, here's what those numbers truly do mean. One that those uh, numbers really did mean more than just getting things balanced. They also are telling us that every time I want to make an ammonia ion or ammonia molecule, I need this much of everything. Well, the whole reaction doesn't balance itself out. So I can't make just one. I got to make two of them. And be in doing so, that means I need to up my amounts of other things. I need to up the amount of hydrogen just so that I can make ammonia. Because I can't make just one. It's like, again, bringing back the bike idea. You want to buy, make a bike. You need a frame. You need two wheels. You need two pedals. Unfortunately, the wheels only come in sets of six. You're like, uh... And your frames only come in sets of five. You're like, why wouldn't you just buy just one? Well, that's not how they're packaged. Think about how many 
how many normal packages of hot dogs do you get? They're like, eight or ten, right? And you're like, oh, how many buns are in a hot dog thing? Eight. You're like, I have ten hot dogs and eight buns. How many buns are you going to have to make to end? How many hot dog packages are you going to have to so that eventually they even out? That's what we're dealing with. The same idea. You only need one grill, right? But it's the same thing. It's like, why do they do that? I don't know. Maybe it's a conspiracy by the hot dog and bun uh, companies. They're like, we'll just make them. I don't know. Stinky buns. Okay. But you're dealing with the same thing. You want to make ammonia. Well, you, know, only, you can only make two of them at a time. Well, that requires you to have one nitrogen molecule and three hydrogen molecules to do that. That means for every one nitrogen, you need three hydrogen. There's your ratio, one to three. But it can also be said a little bit differently. You can say it is that I need three hydrogen molecules for every one nitrogen. That ratio, one to three or three to one, changes what's on what when it comes down to the fraction form of a ratio. If we double everything, does that double my product? Sometimes does sometimes not so much if we have 2.3 moles of hydrogen how many moles of nitrogen do we need that 2.3 moles maybe came from a certain amount volume of hydrogen is necessary. Well, chances are if a company is making ammonia, it's probably only going to purchase hydrogen. Nitrogen 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. It just has to condense it down. Okay. One, this is in balance, so we need to balance it. And so we balance it. Moles of hydrogen is my given. So I'm going to underline that. Then I need to look at this and say, how many moles of nitrogen? That's my want. So when I look at my chemical reaction, do I need anything or need any information about ammonia? No, I didn't underline it. And this is a wonderful example of underline things. Write the problem out. Show yourself and or others the work that you need to do. Circle it if you have to. Put a box around it if you have to. So it makes it easier for you to identify what you're given and what you want. I'm given 2.3 moles. I'm asked to find moles of nitrogen. Well, we then ask ourselves that question. How many moles of hydrogen does it take to get moles of nitrogen? or to react all of the moles of nitrogen. Well, I have three, and where did that three come from? Well, it came from the balanced chemical reaction. That's why it's the same color. So we can identify 
color association. We ultimately want moles of nitrogen. But then sometimes we look at it and say, but there's no number in front of nitrogen. If there's no number, that means we have one. Now, we can see that our moles of hydrogen cancel out, leaving us with exactly what we want. And it's 2.3 divided by three. And I don't have that memorized, I'm sorry. And we get about 0.77 moles of nitrogen. So here's another one. This one has a little bit more and we're going to have to remember some things that we've talked about before. Uh, how many moles of carbon dioxide will be produced by the decomposition of 5.6 moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate? So there's a lot going on here and we need to, uh, uh, because of that, I'm going to have to resize this and uh, kind of figure some things out. First off, we'll notice that there is no chemical reaction given to us, which means we need a chemical reaction. Um, so to write that out, uh, carbon dioxide will be produced. So that means carbon dioxide is going to be a product. So I might as well start it off and write it over there. And since it's a gas, by the decomposition of, and that's we're going to reading these problems in a way that it's taking out, you know, how many moles. Well, that part isn't there. Carbon dioxide will be produced. So that's where I put it there. Uh, by the decomposition, the number at this point in time is important, but it's not super important. Instead, what's important is the decomposition of a metal hydrogen carbonate, more specifically, sodium hydrogen carbonate. And so now, because it's a decomposition reaction, and we have a product, or at least one of our products, and we also are now going to have our reactant, we should be able to figure out what the other products are going to be. And with that, we know we are going to have H2O and we are also going to have sodium carbonate. Now, if I don't write out sodium carbonate correctly, I'm going to get this wrong. And so therefore, we have to make sure that we double check that we have it correct. Paying attention to these signs is going to make life very difficult when you're looking at that uh, formula. Always double check your signs until you know you know all of this. Did I do the signs correctly? Are there anything? Because if I didn't, all of the balancing that's going to need to be done is going to go way wrong real fast because this reaction only requires one number to balance it out as we've seen this reaction a number of times. So now we look at our problem a little bit differently. How many moles? Okay, so it's moles of carbon dioxide. Well, I need to know moles of carbon dioxide. Sodium hydrogen carbonate was given to us. And so how many moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate? Actually of 5.6 moles. And so that's my given. That's 5.6 moles. Let's write that out a little better here. So 5.6 moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate that we have seen there. I need now my conversion factor. My conversion factor for this reaction, well, I have to have what I, I'm given on the bottom, so that has to be on the bottom. My want always goes on top, 
in a conversion problem. Now, sometimes our want is going to be multiple steps, but that's kind of what I want to get to my next step. Well, now I have to answer the question, you know, how many moles of carbon dioxide does it take to uh, react with that or are made from that? Well, two moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate will produce one mole of carbon dioxide. That's the ratio that we have with there. Now, we can now just see that this is just a kind of division problem, a uh, problem that uh, is just that. It is a conversion problem, as we've talked about a number of times, that all these stoichiometry problems are just conversion problems. So 5.6 divided by 2 ends up giving me 2.8 moles of carbon dioxide. So we have to have seen kind of this go through this process a number of times, which we have, and we're good with that. And we're get, we finally find what we're given and what we want.